When a steelhead angler thinks of ways to challenge themselves, what comes to mind? Is the biggest challenge simply catching the fish? Or is it learning new water and exploring new river systems that these fish may or may not inhabit at the time? Or is the main challenge putting themselves far from home out of their realm of comfort and safety and fighting the variables of fatigue, weather, water conditions, the fish, and above all, the simple fact of not knowing what lies around each bend of the river. With this being our third seven day challenge, the obvious target is one we love and cherish the most, Steelhead. Welcome to the seven day challenge, Cold Steel Edition. So here we are, back with another seven day challenge, everyone. And this is the one I think we've all been waiting for, the Steelhead Challenge. So as we've all learned over the years, I like to have me a nice camp. And for a situation like we had here, we were going a long ways from home, we were taking the wall tent, we were really, really doing this the right way and taking a really good sustainable camp. Something that we had a big wood stove, we had a big wall tent, and there's gonna be three of us and the dog staying in this thing the whole time. So I wanted to make sure, as we all know, to find one of the best camps available, which didn't exactly go as planned. Too good there, bud. Let's see here. So here we are, morning number one. We're up at the bug crack at dawn. We're hitting the icy roads to head to Marlin, who's staying in a hotel, mind you. And guess who's late? I can't really explain to you guys how excited I am to be starting day one here. We we're trying to stray away from going with guys and we really wanted to be put to the test to see if we could do this entire challenge and fish seven days on seven rivers without fishing with anybody else that knew where we were. We were really shooting from the hip. So here we go, day number one by ourselves. I got my best friend in the boat, I got my dog and we're headed down the river. Well, status update, we've launched, we're floating and Marlon's walking back to his truck once again, naturally. He always jokes how I'm the late one, but today, it's his day to be late. Damn, this looks good. 
Look at that down there where that tree is. Oh my god, it looks so good. There he is, Sean. Sean, get him, got him. Just kidding. Gotcha. Got a good feeling about there. And my plums. My plums are tingling. An otter in there. Look, the otter's gonna eat my bobber. Bobber down on the otter. Well, that was kind of cool. Some of the local wildlife. That's probably a good sign that there was a fish in here, but the otters actually would chase down steelhead and try to eat him, so that's not really helpful having him in there. Cool as it may be, not helpful. That sucks. <laughs> Can you bust out some Asian snacks? Asian stack? Try one here? Let's try these. Yeah. All right, so we got some Korean snacks here from our buddy at the Puyallup Show. He brought us a whole bunch of stuff, Jordan. He's got a bunch of sauces for you, all sorts of different things that he did for cooking. But then he brought me a whole bunch of different random snacks, and we're going to try them throughout this series, at least throughout this weekend. Today, number one, we have the Honey Twist Snack. Sweet and delicious. Wow, these are good, dude. Those are so good. Nice shape, great presentation. They're so crunchy, they're not too sweet. Mm. They're almost like a rice cracker. Mm -hmm. Sean, you want some? Yes. Come on, dude. Have some, have some honey snacks. Delicious. Really good. You guys ever want to send us any snacks? Me and Jordan <laughs> love it. We love trying snacks, so. What do you guys have seen? One of my favorite things at the sportsman shows is people always bring us like, just all sorts of random snacks and stuff to try. Yep. And we, so. uh, we've been doing on Safe Issue on the other channel, we've been doing Munch of the Week every week on, on the episodes. So, if you want to see a, a special Munch on the Munch of the Week, you know where to find us. See if Little approves. He says no. Nope. He didn't want it. Oh, there's some. One, two, there's one, two, three. I see three of them right there, right where the otter was. Such a bummer. First sign of fish that we saw, and Mother Nature screwed it up. You ran through there, didn't you? I did, but I, 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 I right honestly, there. I stopped casting as soon as I saw the otter, because a lot of times the fish will just spook because of those little guys, but there they were. There was fish in that hole. So the conditions are something that we're gonna be talking about a ton going through this series here. The weather was crazy up and down and the conditions of the rivers that we were fishing were very variable. They were very low, very cold weather and extremely, extremely clear water. And the worry is starting to build. First yeah. fish, everybody. He was, First look fish. how shallow he was in. Yep. Guys, I find I got one on the bead. <laughs> this weekend, guys, I planned on committing to the bead. So I have one of our new beads on from our drop. These are available on our website right now, guys. Oh, there he goes. Uh, That's okay, though. That's okay. Doesn't count, though. That's okay. It was just a little fish. I'm just stoked that we got one, guys. That was on our new bead. Like I said, that we have available on our website right now. We got a lot of these made. Here they are. You guys just witnessed, you know, there's kind of a long running joke in Addicted that I hate beads. And that is why. Because every, it seems like every fish you, it's like you have a 50% chance when yeah. you hook a fish on a bead. It's like you don't, it's not a guarantee. Whereas if you get one on a jig or a worm or something, it's like usually you It's a shocker if, you, if they do, if they do come yeah. off on Yeah, looks that. like we got another good little bucket coming up. Ripple Mania, Ripple Mania 2000. Jordan said that I had that rig wrong, so. He re-rigged it for me, and we're gonna see if I lose a fish next time I hook him. I like his hook set, though. He was a little Yankee Panky on it, but it's all right. We hooked one, we're looking better. We just saw our first fish. Two holes later, we hooked our first fish. We're in Ripple Mania now, Ripple Mania 2000. Good things are gonna happen. 
the size of these trees. It's amazing. I'm, this where we're at up here is one of the, the only temperate rainforests in the world. It is a, it's a giant, one of the largest land masses of, of rainforest in the world um, along this whole coast. And it's not disappointing. It's some of the biggest sickest spruces I've ever seen along a river. Just I caught that place. fish in about two feet of water. If that. Yeah. Completely threw up our whole plan. I know. <laughs> Fish. Oh, looking at it, everyone. <laughs> That's teamwork. Super crummer. Super crummer. Oh, don't do that. Oh, he's coming right at us. He's going to try to sink us. I'm just trying to keep pressure on yeah, everyone. I'm just going to slowly slide over to the sandbar. I had just changed beads. Just changed it to the pink one. Yeah, if you can get out, I think I can get him to you in the I'm net. Do it he's ready, dude. Okay, here we go. Okay, I got him. Got him. First fish of the trip. You worked hard for that one, Woo! man. A lot of cold hours. Cold man, that was tip. teamwork, because I did not see the bobber. <laughs> that was the fishiest bobber down known to man. There is a god. Fish number one in the boat, and of all things for my man to catch it on, Marlon catches up on a bead. And there it is, the first fish of the trip. What an incredible, it's got like a bluish hue to it. Definitely a fish that's been in the system a little bit longer. You can see on the tail there, it's been digging a red. Nonetheless, it's a fish. Look at that. I had just put that on, I was fishing orange almost all day, and I should have made a switch sooner than what I did. But I finally did, and it paid off with this little honey. She has a little honey indeed, isn't she? Yeah. But these beads in particular that we're using are made by Addicted. So I think he has a little bit more of a reason to be using them. And what do you know, first fish in the boat, river number one, day number one is success on the bead of all things. There she is. She ain't much, but we worked hard for her and we still got some river left, so she's ready to work. Bye bye. Thank you, honey. Swam off extremely strong. <laughs> extremely cold. <laughs> we got one. one. We got one. We were starting to sweat. We're almost under river number two. The way that this float is going today, we're gonna to float out of one river and into another river. So once we get to that confluence, we're in a completely different river. So we can check off two rivers in one day today. And we are in the running for that. That's river number one, fish number one. Hey! There he is, got him. Got him. Damn it. Crap! Oh, man! Dang it! Yeah, hold on dude, don't just bust in there! Oh, I got really excited! You gotta film it! Gotta I film am! It. We're showing the world the much! Another gift from our buddy at the Tool Show! Oh my god, I'm so excited right now! Ooh, it smells nice! Smell test to the past! Oh my god! What's that look like? A tasty treat. Oh, dude. No, I don't want. You don't, don't want, want sick your guy? sick hands. I'll get my own bag here. I'll be the judge. What do you think? What's the verdict? Mm. They good? Unreal. They look good. Really good. Paired with a little banana milk to wash it all down. Again, guys, these are all snacks that our buddy at the Puyallup Sports and Show came and brought to us and said we had to try. I'm a little scared of this one because I'm not really a big milk fan, so I don't know how much I'm going to like it. It's nice. But I'm going to try it. Taste, it. taste of another culture. Tastes just like uh, I don't taffy. really like milk, so I'm scared. Me neither. But I'm going to try it. Me neither. Actually, really good. It's really good. And then, last but not least, which this one is not new to me, I've had this one before. It's really good. The shin soup. All right, my 
sickness cannot wait any longer. I need to. Soup is good for soul, good for fishermen, good for heart. So this is spicy? Oh yeah. It'll put some hair on your chest. Why is there not a 20 pounder just hiding right there? Ooh, could you imagine if that would have been a fish? Could you imagine, Jordan? No, I couldn't. You couldn't imagine because it wasn't a fish. But we gotta keep hopes high here. So day number one, total success. As the night starts to fall, it starts to snow, it starts to rain, we're all freezing cold and miserable. So we're heading to the takeout to wrap up day number one as a total success. Typical of Marlin and Jordan fashion, we're already an hour behind because we're lazy and uh, we like to sleep in, but we're gonna try to figure it out. These are all rivers that we've never done before. We never floated by ourselves, so we're en route to go try to find the put-ins and the takeouts right now. Day number two starts the snowpocalypse, and I couldn't be more excited. 2023 has been a year we really didn't get a ton of days to fish in the snow around home. So being up somewhere new, being with my best friend and being on the water in one of the most pristine and beautiful settings possible, in one of the most beautiful places possible, is a hell of a way to start day number two. All right guys, switched out beads again today. We got the old Sundown. This was an addicted custom from the DRO. It's got like a mermaid scale on it almost. I can see this little shine. It looks it's really got a good. shine to it. It's gonna get them, I, I can like feel it. it. I'm committed to the beads, boys and girls. Oh my God. I've never seen that. It was steel hit. Very often. It was over there. Yeah, it was like in the dead wall. Well, day two starting off much more action packed than day one. Saw a good friend of ours fighting a fish at the boat ramp when we were shuttling our cars. Get to the very first hole of the day, one jumps out of the water, almost eats Marlin's bobber. So we're off to a good start. Conditions are magical. I mean, you couldn't plan this in a hundred years to show up to one of the most beautiful rivers in the world on a beautiful snowy day. So very excited. Cannot wait to see what happens today, but one development, the forgotten item of the day, anchor. Apparently we were really in a hurry to get out of the out of the rain last night, and uh, Jordan didn't put his anchor away. And Now it's on the road somewhere. Yeah, now it's not in existence, so no anchor. But we're gonna make it work. Yes, we will. I didn't even realize my bobber was in there the whole time. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh uh, man, the sickness has still got me, everybody. But it's okay, we're fighting through it. I'm floating in and out of consciousness and they say that I'm back. I'd agree with that. I just take my time with all this shit. I still believe in that. I had someone tell me I fell off. Ooh, I needed that. And they want to see me pick back up. But where'd I leave it at? I know I exaggerated things. Now I got it like that. Tuck my napkin in my shirt cause I'm just mobbing like that. <laughs> you know good and well that you don't want a problem like that. That's wrap session one for the day. We'll get some more wrap sessions I dig it, going. Dude, it's getting me in the we'll get some more wrap sessions going for you guys today. I got a lot of wrap up here in my head that we're gonna be wrapping today. <laughs> we got a lot of rip wrap in the river and rip wrap in the head. Red freaking pearl is gonna get him today. Yeah, it does seem like a red pearl. Red Demption, dude. Snow. Fire. I'm gonna get a 20 on it, I can feel it, dude. 
You I've feel seen it in more my blood. twenty pound seal I caught on that worm just about any other method. Yeah, it's in a, my personal life. It's a freaking killer. Two of my biggest fish in my life came on that worm. One of them, you were there. Mm -hmm. So hours has gone by. We've been rowing down the river, covering water, missing fish, seeing fish, getting lots of bobber downs, and finally, finally, we catch a break. Oh, yep, that's him. Got him. Yes, really big one. Really nice chromer. Oh my God. Really nice one. Stop doing that fish. Oh, that, I literally just got goosebumps. That dude. was such an awesome bobber down. Oh my God. Really nice chromer. Oh, it's a classic. Oh, oh, it's so gross. He's already done because he's cold. Oh, wow. He's still, <laughs> he wants to eat it twice. Oh, wow. What a cool fish. Pretty sure it's got sea lights all over it, man. That's what we came for. Phew. First one, first real one of the trip. Check it out, everyone. Just a gorgeous hen. The hens like the sloppy, man. Wow. She's got like the leathery scales too. The true wild steelhead. Such a beautiful one. Holy shit, this water's cold, guys. Like, <laughs> insanely cold. He's hurting. Poor guy. He's hurting. Look I at that him. fish, guys. What an absolute unit. Three. Clear Three. fins. Oh, let's let her go. Let's let her go make some babies, huh? Bye bye, honey. Oh, I'll miss you. There she goes. Brother. Oh. <laughs> I sound like a baby, guys, but this water is like. I cannot feel either of my hands right now at all. Like literally cannot feel them. Oh my God, I just had another one. I didn't even set the hook. I reeled on it and it went to run with my stuff. Damn it, dude. Now my whole room's about to be ripped off too. I didn't hook him, Jordan. That was a fish for sure. Would you see him roll? Yeah, he flashed when I reeled on him. I thought it was bottom because it was shallowing up right there. So guys, that is a true testament to like not get complacent. Cam always loves to say hook sets are free, so set the hook, and I didn't right there. Okay, man, that's decision. I keep screwing up every hole. We got that first fish, but we've been trying to fish effectively, and there's an unchartable amount of water on this river. It's absolutely delicious. It needs to be casted into, and I can't cast into it. So we're gonna make a boulder anchor. The most important part of this here, I think it's gonna be finding one that's the correct shape. You can't really tie a rope around a flat rock, or a round rock, rather. Um, so I need to find one that's gonna be the right shape. And then I think I found that one. Maybe the one here, should be heavy enough. Maybe this one. Uh, I think Marlon found the culprit. <clears throat> Perfect triangle rock. I feel oh. like that's the, that's the one. That's the one, dude. Oh my god. It's not super heavy, but it is heavy enough. Yeah, we just need something to slow us down a little bit in some of these spots. Let's just might do it. We're gonna find out. Anchor. I think I should uh, deploy the anchor. Let's give her a whirl, see how good she works. All right. Pick this thing up. Name from, of science. Pick this thing up from Ace Hardware. Yep. Oh, she's a whole. Oh. Oh, we're dragging though. Just a little bit. That's okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, no. Yeah, we're holding. We're a holding. Woo! -hoo. That's Came the on. one thing about rocks is they're not very grabby. They're not it's kind of perfect hard. though. It's a very natural approach. That's all we're in it. You little haters are too jealous of us to love us. You hate it. G-Unit made it. Then Obi's coming. D-Twizzy's coming. You sick to your stomach. 
50% of it's 50 cent. The other 50% of it's whose color of skin you is. And if you even decide to burn that label down, you better find a building and fly a fucking plane into it. Because I ain't trying to get you intricate into it. I'm just trying to give you a little hint for your own benefit. Rap song number two. That, that was a fish. That was a fish. That was a fish. No, I, I saw the swim. I set the hook and shook his head. Oh my god. That's a big one. Oh god, that was cool. Oh, that was cool. So the first time that fish took his jig, the thing swam. I watched it turn and swim down on the ledge. I went through there a second time. To a T, hit that fish in the face and got him twice. It's not huge, but it's nice. Oh, it looks way bigger. No, he's magnifying it now. Oh, that right. thing looks 40 feet long. Oh, wow. Woo! Success. We worked hard for that one. You said he was huge. You saw it. Yeah, he Don't did stay look. Stay little. Get down. He looked big. Get down, please. Let's look at it. Touch it. Call it George. Pretty little buck. They, they, the water magnified. I, that thing looked 40 inches. <laughs> all fuck. All. Excuse. I don't. Never mind. <laughs> I got a pee. So two fish in the boat, we couldn't be happier. We're accomplishing our goal as a team, as a whole. It doesn't matter in my mind who's catching these fish, whether it's me, whether it's Marlon, whether it's Sean even behind the camera hooking up. We're catching the fish on a different river every day as a team and as a unit. There he is, Addix, fish number two. Working a lot harder than we initially thought we were gonna have to up here, huh? But that's all right, because we're getting them. Sure is a pretty one. He's ready to go, you guys ready? See you later, dude. Huh? You guys, instant replay of that fish. That thing looked about 19 times bigger than it actually was. But I'm not embarrassed. It's fish number two on river number two. That's a total success. Now let's see if I can get it done. Okay. All right, boys. Pro Marlin on the sticks. We are literally on one of the best rivers in the Pacific Northwest right now. And Mr. Kanigi cannot catch a steelhead. I don't know why, he's got something something bad karma, or something's hanging over his head, or I don't know what's going on, dude, but the fish gods are not liking him right now. To be fair, he did row me down the river yesterday and most of today. He rowed me into both those fish. Because if he would have... Oh my god, look at that one. Oh, oh my god. god, that was a big one. That was such a nice one. I saw him last minute. Oh, oh my god. god. He had a broken off worm in his mouth. You didn't even fish that. Huh? That fish was 40 inches long. Sounds like a fish tail, everyone. Right. <laughs> I did see him. He I did see him. We casted at him. He moved down when we floated over. I saw him move a couple times. We got through the rapid, folks, and we didn't die. That's about the biggest rapid I've ever rode in my life. <laughs> All right, back to what I was saying. That thing was huge. Jordan needs to catch a fish. So I'm trying to row him into one, but so far I'm unsuccessful. Like, both those fish that I caught, it was like the first setup that was going through that run was gonna get eaten. That's just how it was. And so, we, and a lot of the holes that we've stopped and tried to like really fish hard, we just haven't got fish out of them. So just gotta keep moving down river. Hopefully we can find them. It doesn't matter because Jordan's here for another five more days on five more rivers. Trying pretty freaking hard. The stress, the anxiety, I'll say the anxiety is high. Oh my God, my worm keeps folding over. Everything is going wrong. I'm losing the anchor. We're not hooking a fish. My worm's tying in a knot. <sighs> Perfect cast. Aww. And then, of course, if that's not enough, Mother Nature decides to start punishing me.
And boy, did she ever. I'm being smited. I think I did something wrong. Look at the water out here, everybody. It's turning, it looks like foam, but it's just all the hail on the surface of the water. like so white you can't even see out here it's like staring at a piece of paper okay here we go the next Korean snack of the trip I can dig I can dig sweet and then spicy similar to a bugle I like it yeah that's a keeper. Day two comes to a close, another total success. That's two rivers, two fish. They're getting bigger, they're getting brighter, but one issue looming on tomorrow's day is that I'm losing Marlin. I'm gonna be all by myself, and I'm really starting to wonder how I'm gonna pull this thing off. Well, addicts, it's the end of my trip. I gotta go back to work tomorrow, so I'm gonna leave Jordan to the rest of the rivers. I hope he accomplishes his goals. He's had a rough couple of days, so. I'm excited for him for the next few days. Again, this is tough, guys. We're fishing rivers that we've never fished before. Well, I fished a lot of them, but not really in these drifts that we're doing. And uh, it makes it hard to come and show up on a new river and catch fish. So we'll see how successful Jordan is the next few days. And we'll see you guys later. Mm. On tonight's menu, if it's not obvious enough, we're doing elk cheese steaks on sourdough. That'll keep you going for official streak right there. Boy, ain't that a beautiful thing. Good for the soul. Not so good for the outhouse. But I'm happy. Mm. Unreal. So day three, Snowmageddon 2.0 is what I'm going to call it. Good cup of joe. The plan that we had for day three really didn't suffice to what weather that we just had. We were planning on floating the way upper end of a river, getting into an area that I could really kind of break down the smaller style of river and stand a chance of pulling off this day three challenge all by myself with nobody else fishing with me. And that proved to be a little bit harder than we thought it was gonna be. We are yet again testing my backup skills, everybody. I don't think we're gonna make it into this river today. We have some really gnarly conditions. A giant, giant hill, even bigger than the one we just came up to go down here. 
and I don't think it's safe. I'd rather only test our luck going down one hill. So good thing there's other rivers around. We're gonna change up our options and go try somewhere different. for the day. Should work good. She is. Day number three is underway. It was an absolute rat race trying to find somewhere to fish this morning. Our original plan was completely snowed in. We couldn't get, as you guys saw, feasibly into the boat ramp that we wanted to. It wasn't worth wrecking the truck, but luckily we came to a place with a lot of options. So we found a different place to go. It's late in the afternoon. We're definitely getting a late start here, but day number three is underway and it's my turn to catch fish. It's been a really, really hard struggle the last couple of days for me with rowing the boat, figuring out these new rivers, trying to keep us all safe and, and navigate these new waterways that I've never seen before. I'm exhausted. I'm still sick. The cold has got me, but I'm not going to be held down by a cold or the snow or any of it. I'm going to catch fish today. So day number three underway. Let's get it done, everyone. So the only way I could see being successful by myself by losing my fishing partner on day three was by trying absolutely everything I possibly could and fishing as fast as I possibly could. Hit him with the worms, hit him with the jigs, hit him with the beads, and even stop and fish a fly and a spinner in certain spots and see if we can pull a fish out of a bad situation. Well, I'm gonna take what I've learned the last couple days and switch out my gear. This float, this setup I have is for fishing deep dark holes. I got four split shots on there. I got an extra swivel. I got all this cumbersome line. And I'm gonna make a little bit of a change here. I'm gonna fish a fixed float like Marlin was the last couple days because I think especially in this kind of water, it's gonna pay off. I have other things here that have floats that are get down to the bottom a little easier, but I won't be able to sleep tonight if I don't make this change. not a 18, 19, 26 pound steelhead sitting there under that log jam. Gotta believe, just gotta believe. I believe. that had my nuts in my hand coffee peanuts that is totally missed that bobber down story of my life there's a fish yep it's something had my nuts in my in my hand again but it worked this time first fish of the trip I don't care what it is it's coming to the boat and it's ours it's a white fish <laughs> <We're leaving. sighs> at least it's wiggling beauty of a mountain white fish sorry mister I'm gonna try to handle you with my fingertips because I don't want to take my gloves off oh mountain white fish first fish of the trip for old Jordan we'll take it it's, it's shiny it's silver and it's gone now Woohoo! Oh wow, trophy number two. First stick of the trip. Had to release her. She was a wild one. gentlemen we are riding it out till total darkness probably the most disappointing day of all tried really really hard I mean I had my good little program going fished every hole effectively didn't see another boat 
other than right at the beginning of the day, the entire float. Had the place to ourselves, still couldn't make it happen. I must say, day three may have been about the hardest that I have steelhead fished all by myself in a long, long time. We went from dawn all the way till dusk till it was pitch black and Brooke came and picked us up with absolutely no fish. Definitely disappointed, but luckily, I got a nice warm camp and a nice warm meal waiting for me. All right, we got our meat seasoned up. We did a little Montreal, a little Parmesan and garlic little bit of salt and pepper. And then the next secret ingredient is the garlic and Parmesan mashed potatoes. I'm gonna dump that in there for the breading of the steaks and then we're gonna fry it on a little Camp Chef grill right here in the tent. I must say, camping is easy and fun. Stop with salad. For the win. Steaks are perfect. Oh man, lost all the breading on that side, but it's okay. We're gonna save it. We're gonna save it. Breading is life around these parts. Steak's done. Toss in the salad. Toss in my salad. After a long day, nothing really quite beats. A nice hearty elk steak dinner. Salad looks good. Our instant taters look good. Pretty much we are looking good. Gotta taste it with you guys. Oh, look who's up. Oh, hello. Oh, and another one. Ooh, perfectly cooked. Beautiful color. So delicious. If you guys have been watching these videos over time and you haven't found the love for instant mashed potatoes, it's about time you try it. This is delicious. Mm. So it snowed probably a good another foot last night, everybody, and all through the night it sounded like gunshots going off. At first it was scaring everybody in the tent, but I've heard it before, and it was trees falling. And uh, as we were asleep, little to our knowing, a tree fell on the boat. So, goal number one of today is to get the tree off the boat. We're gonna evaluate the situation. I might just use it as a, a snow clearing device and just pull right out of the damn thing, but we'll see there. But today's adventure is one that I've been very excited for. We're going to a river that I've never caught a fish on, even though I've still never caught a fish on this trip. Um, but this river in particular has always kind of held my heart. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's big, it's beautiful, and there's a lot of snow on the ground. So, cup of joe, we'll hit the road. We'll get fishing today. Day number four, here we go. Well, I was thinking I could just drive away from this thing, but it's going to take some lumberjacking.
Well, just like the chapter title, today's a make or break. We've put a lot of time in, put a lot of miles on, and today we're fishing a river that I have wanted to catch a fish on my entire life. It's one that's been eluding me in a place that is probably the most beautiful place you could ever go steelhead fishing, if you ask me. Everybody has their opinion, but to me, this is the iconic steelhead river, and the pressure is definitely on. Day number four, here we go. Let's go fishing. And we're off. Welcome everybody to river number four. What an incredible setting. The color of this water already has me half chubbed. The snowfall, to the setting, everything is shaping up to be an epic day. Super disappointing day yesterday. I'm still sad about it. And the thing again, like I said in the interview, I'm so sad about is how hard we were trying. It's not like I was just lackadaisically fishing. I was going everywhere. I was trying every single method, changing up methods. And, and presentations and I still didn't catch any fish. So today is a new day and a beautiful one at that. Look at this scene. We're in a winter wonderland. This river in particular is a special regulation in place where we cannot fish from a floating device. So we'll be floating along, getting out of the boat, floating along, getting out of the boat, which will make it nice. I'll be able to really dial in and effectively fish every little piece of water that I'm going after. So I got drift fishing rigs, I got spinners. I know a lot of people don't fish spinners here and this is Spinnertopia. So I'm gonna be fishing my spinner a lot today. And then another special one I got is the spay rod for today. This is a perfect river for casting a fly. So all we can do is try really, really hard. And hopefully today is the day. Jordan gets his first fish on the seven day challenge. Let's do it. All right, here goes the first cast of the day. Gotta hop out of the boat, then we're ready to go. Oh, what was that? This is already hard to fish. I'm having a hard time seeing what the holes are. This is a big glacial river, as you guys can see, wide, flat, and a lot of just rolls and humps and, and w random deep spots, honestly. You know, I'm like looking at this hole back up here. It ended up being like eight, nine feet down next to that log jam on the left side there. And there was no way I could tell on the way down. I, I didn't know I would want to stop there. I didn't see a bed in the river, nothing like that. This thing has these big pockets in it. It's hard to not be overwhelmed in a place like this, um, especially with the grand scheme of how big the river is. Um, this is a big glacial gravel wash style of, of river, and there was times throughout the day that I would look at my phone and we would be on dry land on the satellite, and the river had completely cut a new course over the last year or two years since those satellite images had been taken, and I had no pot to piss in. I didn't know where I was going. I was a little guy in a big river, and it was really, really starting to wear on me and get frustrating trying to identify where these fish were going to be. But the only thing I can do is just fish it all. Man, good pee. Second best feeling known to man. <gasps> what was that? Cell phone.
I just had one. He hit it so hard. What the hell? I was going through there, tip down, letting it flutter, and it just it moved my whole arm. It took out just a big old one giant head shake and then came off. I don't know what that was, you guys. Oh my God, that sucks. It did not, nothing there. I did not hit anything. But right about here, it was just, woo. Ah, come on. This is starting to be painful. How <laughs> did that not get hooked? One thing that I think this video promotes more than anything is the reality of how much drive and determination steelhead anglers have. Um, a lot of people in the world and around the country probably think we're crazy for the amount of effort and the amount of miles and money that we spend on trips like this, but the amount of success that you feel and the amount of pride you feel when you get to shake hands with that beast and, and get to chase that fish of a lifetime or even see it living in, in their natural habitat. We're the intruders there. These fish live in these areas. They live there for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And you're there for an opportunity to just get to know them for a minute. Talk about down to the wire. Sun setting, probably one of the most, I, I swear there was somebody looking out for me on this one. Cause as I was floating down the river and I picked this last spot to fish, I was thinking to myself, man, fish or not, this is paradise. We're in one of the most wild and beautiful places I can personally say I've ever laid foot. And what do you know? We step out of the boat, magic happens. That's a fish, that's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> oh God, this is a really bad spot. I just saw these boulders coming down from this last little section. We're almost done on this drift today. We don't have hardly any water left. And I finally got one. What is this? What is this thing? Oh God. I don't even know if the boat's gonna stay here. I just hopped out to make a quick cast and wham. Finally, finally. Oh God, this is a nice fish too. I don't know if I'm gonna land him right here this fast. Let's take him down somewhere we can get him up to the bank. Oh, it's a really nice one. Please stay on there. Please stay on there. Got barbless hooks on here. I see a nice little soft pocket we can take him to. Okay. Here we go. Okay, we might get him here. Oh God, he is a wild animal. Oh, come on, baby. Gotta get my wool gloves off. I'm gonna touch this fish. Whew. Okay, I think we got it. I think we got it. Please stay on. We just wanna show you to the world. Come on, come on. There he is. We got him. We got him. He's in our hands. Oh God, we got him. Finally. <laughs> Thanks to the creator for that one. Talk about working hard to catch a fish. Finally got him. I stuck hard to my guns today. I knew I'd, I'd just find the fish where they were and then I'd get them to bite. I was worried I wasn't using the right gear, but it paid off. That's my first steelhead of the seven day series. God, it feels good. We did it, we did it everybody. Thank you so much for sticking with me on this adventure. It took some really, really hard work, but God, it tastes good. That victory tastes good. See you later, bud. Yes. You know, getting to catch that fish and, and accomplishing that goal on day four, letting that thing swim away and standing back and looking at the river only brings one thing to mind is, man, I wish I could come back here tomorrow. And as we float down river, I start to realize how much we've missed so far on this river. I spent a lot of time in the wrong section. And as we get closer and closer to the takeout, further and further into the darkness, I start to realize there was so much more to this river than I had got to see, which breaks my heart. But what doesn't break my heart is getting a fish on day four. I needed that.
Wow. Here we go day five and we're back in my element small creek small water big trees just how i like it today we've parked the raft we're on foot and we're beating cheeks down one of the most beautiful creeks that i think i've ever laid foot on and the fact that we were gonna be on foot, crossing back and forth across the river and covering as much water as we possibly could and hunting these fish down has really got me jazzed. This is gonna be a good day. Well, first observation, day number five, it's clear. We've chosen a tiny little creek that we're gonna be hiking today for day number five, kind of switching things up back to our roots and back to the water that is a lot of fun to fish. It's been overwhelming the last few days trying to fish these big bodies of water, especially by myself. So I think we kind of have a little bit of a heightened edge here today, other than the clear and, and low conditions that we're seeing here. The cool part about this is I know there's fish in this river, so we might be doing some sight fishing today. We're going to be looking for these fish and visually trying to see them before we hook them. So it's going to make for a very interesting day. I can't wait. Probably one of the most beautiful settings in the world right now. We are in steelhead paradise, everybody. Day number five is going to be good. So I'm only packing two rods with me here today. I'm doing fixed float. There's no reason to go with a slide float in any of this water. It's too clear. I want just my leader down there. I don't want these fish being able to see all that setup. So I'm going fixed float setup and my spinner setup. I might change my spinner as to yesterday. It works pretty good in that little bit dirtier water, but we have some absolutely clear stuff. So I might go all silver or even in a black and silver. Um, something that's not as quite as big and flashy as is Michael Jackson. Let's get heading up river. I see some really good spots up ahead of us. It's time to beat cheeks, put the Lamborghinis on and go find the fish. One or the other, what do we choose? Man, I've done good on this one in the cold, clear water. This is Old Faithful. I think that matches where we're at a little better. This looks pretty, this looks practical. We're going practical. You know, it's times like these, when you're in a foreign environment, you have ultimate conditions, ultimate highs or ultimate lows, ultimate clear, is when like all the tools and techniques that you combine over your time of being a steelhead fisherman kind of come in handy and come into play really. Like having my glasses so I can see into this hole, having the ability to change my spinners and having a variety of them to match the situation, having the rod and everything, the sensitivity light enough to actually figure out this hole and like work into a foreign environment. Is, is actually pretty fun. It's, I think it's the most fun part of this is having all this gear, having all these things that we get to play with. As fishermen, I think a lot of it catches the fishermen first, but getting to put it to use in the situation where I'm on the hunt, I'm, I'm needing every little edge and every little bit on top of Mother Nature that I can get, and I have it with me. I have my glasses, I have my hat, so I can block out the sun. I, got, I got, just got it all. I got it all, and it feels so good. 
But in reality, it really helps you kind of key in and, and heighten your ability to be successful on that trip or on this challenge like we're doing here, the seven day challenge. I kind of need every bit that I can get when I'm bouncing around like this. So it is pretty neat. Come on. Oh God, I can't believe it. Dang, no fish in hole number two, but it's all right, we got a long ways to go. The river's definitely low enough where we can cross all over the place. I'm just gonna start hunting for them with my eyes. I wanna see a fish before I cast at it now. Already I can see I need to go small. I need to go fixed floats, I need to go spinners, and I need to cover water quickly. The thing about this creek I can already tell is just about anywhere there's gonna be a fish, I might be able to see him as far as the clarity of the water and the depth. So I'm gonna work fast, I'm gonna be stealthy, and I'm gonna cover every single nook and cranny in this little creek. Well, if it's not apparent enough, I am just straight up Rambo fishing. I'm trying to hit everything as fast as humanly possible, work through every little run, any spot that I can't see the bottom, get a cast in it, whether it's with a jig or a spinner, and I'm covering ground. I'm gonna keep heading down. We're getting close to the mouth of this river where it connects with another one. And I would imagine if this is a place where steel had come, they're gonna be held up at the mouth, waiting to come up into this area. So I'm just gonna keep putting on miles. Let's find a fish. At this point, everybody, we've probably made it about three and a half to four miles down this river. We're just going from hole to hole to hole, and I'm starting to wonder if we even picked the right place, if we chose the right water levels, if we chose the right day to go to this river, because uh, we chose these, these destinations and, and set this trip up as a schedule so that we would be in the right place at the right time, and it all made sense in how in the order of things were. But I'm starting to wonder if we made the wrong choice. All I can do is go from hole to hole, keep putting the miles on, keep sweating, and just pray that we find a hole that will hold the steelhead. Got him. Oh my God. All that work for that. Oh. So we have a big agenda today. One was to hike this river and catch this fish, complete this day five challenge with the fish and being successful. But then we have other plans for the evening. So the night's wearing down, we're running out of time and I turn to Sean and I say, Sean, we're gonna walk down to this next hole and this is gonna be it. If we don't get one here, we're leaving. Bottom, really nice one too. Cromer, Cromer. Oh, he's hot. He's hot. Oh, he absolutely smashed it. Yes! Oh, I'm starting to worry, everybody. The hard work paid off. Come on, baby. Stick with me. Absolutely electric chrome. He is pissed. He's all wrapped up in the line. He's right on the bank now. I'm gonna reel him to me slow. He forgot he's hooked. Oh, thank Lord. What an absolute struggle. I can't believe we made this happen. Woo -hoo! Something is shining on us today. Look at how pretty this fish is too. Wow. Not the biggest steelhead I've ever seen in the world, but the best one I have on my line right now, that's for darn sure. It's the best steelhead in the world, the one you got on. I think my spinner choice was correct. I knew just to stick to my guns and try to find fish. Oh, how pretty, how absolutely gorgeous. 
thank the creator for that one. Man, that was worth the walk though. Look at this thing. What a beautiful little steelhead. Just the coolest combination of spots all the way down his body. See those really small like leopardy spots on his back. Wow, what a specimen. I'm gonna get him back everyone. See you later little guy. Yes! What a feat. I've, I, we're at least five miles in right now. I've been hiking all day, casting everything dark and everything gloomy, and we finally hit our first fish. But I don't think it's gonna be the last one in this hole. So we called this the last hole of the day before we started walking our way out and packing up camp. The last hole of the day came through, as always. High five, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We did it. On the spinner of all things, and so far on this trip, if you guys have seen, we've caught a fish on something different every single day. Yesterday, we got our fish on the spinner. We got another one on the spinner today. We got them on beads. We got them on the worms. Lord knows what's gonna happen next, but we got our fish today. Day number five is a total success, and we got our fish. It's time to hit the road. Day six and seven, we got a big plan in a big place looking for big fish. So we got camp packed up, we hit the road and we headed to my man Ruben's house for a night of festivities. Okay, the best part of all, and I repeat, the best part of all. This. They call the butter. Mmm. <laughs> Crab mm. shots all around. Mmm. Doesn't Crab get any better than that. That'll keep you warm at night right there. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a perfect piece? Ah. Oh, you got a good one. Oh, my favorite is the body meat. I like a Mine good too. body, you know? It's mm. my favorite. Yeah, here we go. The first ever. Probably not the first ever in history, but the first ever under this roof. Crab shot. A little tequila crab shot. Oh, that's a really good idea, my friend. Here you go. Party. <laughs> wow! Mm. All the drink is left over. Oh yeah. We're doing that again. Match made in heaven. Round two. kind of burger you gotta eat over a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like my burgers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cheers, ma'am. No, mine's over Cheers, gone. where's your at? Cheers. <laughs> Good baby was <one> left. <laughs> Got a double coat today. You gotta double up your coat. There you go. Double coat. Oh, I love you. There we go. Day six is a place that I think anybody who has ever heard about steelhead fishing and, and fish for steelhead in the Pacific Northwest has dreamed of going. Um, I've been lucky to be welcomed with open arms in this area and by so many amazing friends in this area on these very special rivers uh, and get the opportunity to do what we're doing today. Day number six already is gonna be my favorite. Just the thought of it, I got friends back in the boat. We're on a beautiful and very, very, very lifelong bucket list river and it's time to go find us a giant. Save the best for last, everybody. Well, not last, we still have two more days. But today, we're in the jet boat. We've gone from rafts, we've been hiking, now we got a motor on the back, and we're in one of the fishiest places in the world for day number six. Let's do it. 
Being in the Boat with James Beasley from Wicked Lures and my man Ruben Estevillo really kind of puts this thing on the top tier. I'm back with friends, we're back on the water and we're doing what every man loves and it's fishing with his buddies. Game all the way on. <laughs> Do it. Just love being out here, man. Each head. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That's fish. Yep. Oh. It's, it's, it's a trout. trout. It's a trout. Oh boy, he was munchy, munching on it though. Look at that. that Big old yarny. Oh, it's a whitey even. It's a, it's a whitey. Dude. That's cool. Oh boy, I got him. That thing tried to eat that. First catch of the day. I like it. Oh, oh. You mother. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it swim oh, away. It right there, man. Woo. That was live oh, action right there. The oh, he smoked it. You got Yankee Panky on it. I just oh, thought about God, fire. Yeah. Oh, man. Even with your own lure, you oh, make a man. mistake sometimes. And he set the hook. <laughs> oh, it's it over. Just dig and fold it over. Oh, oh, God. Bottom? I don't know. I haven't gone down in there once. It's probably a white. Now, James Beasley has a company called Wicked Lures, and he's going to stick with his stuff all day long, but I can't help myself to throw the book at this place. So we get to the first couple holes of the day. I stick to my guns. I grab my bead. What do you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I want to make it That's a real one. That's a real one. That's a real one. That's a real one. Yeah. Finally switched to the bead, worked it through there three or four times. Kept getting random bobber down, so I was kind of accounting them to be whitefish because that's all he looked so far. And it's not. It's a big chrome fish. I almost feel like those fish chased it down. Because all of a sudden then wham, I had three or four cranks in, I had it on. Okay, I'm about to see him here. First look at him. Oh, what a pretty one. Really nice buck. There we go. Ready? There we go. Woo -hoo! Heck yeah. Woo! Hey. Heck yeah, man. Nice, man. Thank you, guys. Feels good to be fishing with friends again. Oh yeah. Woo <laughs> Thank you, Ruben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my first fish on this river ever. So you got it, it was man. from like probably my third or I fourth time you, fishing. You might have got that one that rolled down there. Yep. I told you, I saw one roll at the tail of the hole. Oh, that's a pretty one too. There it is. And this is, you can pretty much tell as a hatchery fish, it's got some of that pond rub on it, but they don't actually clip their hatchery fish in this area. So our first hatchery fish of the trip in our sixth river. What a beauty. Let's get him back. Later, buddy. Nice Woo! Yes! Romer, Romer, Romer. Right at the boat again. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Butt kicker, he's trying to stop the. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder that the way that yeah, fish did, that was probably the same fish we were getting bit by. It's a little guy. Freshy, man. Woo. Bro. You want to net him right here? Yep, I got him. Dude, this might be a sockeye. I'm not kidding. It looks like a sockeye. It's a so I bet it's a sockeye. It, it is. Like a sockeye. It's a sockeye, dude. 100%. Oh, it is. 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Dude. Oh, it's a blueback, dude. What the hell? <laughs> What the oh hell? Oh my god, dude! <laughs> unicorn! Hell? Unicorn! Oh my god! Who would have thunk? That's the weirdest shit I've I ever know. seen in my life. Oh my god. On the wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah right baby. next to the boat. And they He's... don't bite, they say. No. But they bite no. wicked. That is awesome. I'm like, that fish is so bright and chrome. I'm like, and, and I looked and at this, the tail, I'm like, look it's to it. Wow, that's nuts. One of the most rare and random catches you can possibly have this time of year is in our net, in our hands, and I cannot believe what's just happened. Look at the purple on it. 
you could read a newspaper through its fins. Well, that is just about as rare as catching a 20 pound steelhead, so I'd say we're doing pretty good so far today. Day number six is going swellingly, if you ask me. Did you see that bobber down? I did. Holy. Oh my God. <sighs> right three, you're out. He goes, he's he, no, he's staying a little further left, dude. Closer to that log. Okay, I'm listening, Eagle. There, right there. Is that good? All right, I think, he's, I think that's good. Jesus! That's another blueback, dude. Not big blue. Woo! Oh, 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 hit the anchor! Do you have your anchor up no, there? It's all the way up. It's oh all the way up. my god, he jumped in oh. front of the bow of the boat, dude. Oh, did. did you see that? He took off like a Woo. bullet train, man. That was yeah. a million miles an hour. Woo. Holy that crap. Holy smokes, <laughs> man. Really That's really? a big steelhead, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you were bent. Woo! Yeah, blue back. Did you hear that Rama. line peeling? Woo! That thing was chrome bright. Chrome bright. Chrome, chrome. He hit like a freight train, man. Gosh darn it. Why? That fish was nuts, man. That's some insane thing. What color? Um, cheese. I'm thinking black and red. Black and red's money. There's that one black right here. This one. Sexy that ginger. That looks good. That's the sexy that ginger good. fly. Yeah. It's looking good. Sexy ginger's on the hunt. It's time to get one on the fly. Lost my fly, so that calls for a snack. We got sockeye salmon, smoked cream cheese, and an everything bagel. It's everything the heart desires. Oh my god, you guys, huge, huge, huge. A silence is falling over the crowd. Just a little. Holy crap. Okay, I'm gonna get prepared here. That's like really big, big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like really big, big. And crumb, crumb, crumb. Shoulder. I had my suspicions. Oh, little. He's not done yet. He's gonna go, he's going back. Well, it's going back up river. It's way, way over on that bank. Way out there. I'm not gonna. That's a big steal. Oh head. my god. That's a big one. Wow. <laughs> Hit it twice too. Oh, he followed it probably yeah. 20 feet or more. I go, boom, I just missed one and all of a sudden, bam! And I'm like. That was impressive. He never for a second wasn't gonna Let's eat go it. to the beach. And we did it, we did it, we did it. It took six whole days of fishing and we finally put a big one in the net. The way this fish hit, as you guys saw, we'll do an instant replay for you. Got him anyways. Oh my God! 
It's you, 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 you. We finally got that big fish in the net. Day number six is a total success at this point. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, there's the dude. biggest fish of the trip. Woo! Oh, wow. Yeah. That's an actual wild fish. Wow. That's a wild one, Ruben. Yeah, it's out of close oh, he's strong. The top fin is just perfect. Wow. On the wicket. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh my God, James. Yeah, I know. Brother. <laughs> wow. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. He's perfect. It's got blue. Look at the blue on top of it. It's all... I just love his spots too. You guys can see. Yeah. He was saying that's, how well, it's that's a, a that's true a, wild. That's 100% wild fish. That is incredible. No, 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 no! <laughs> oh, he's still shit. hung up. We got him. Atta boy. <laughs> oh, dude. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Teamwork makes oh the dream work. Biggest fish of the trip by far. Probably 15, 16 pounds. An absolute bruiser. And believe it or not, they even get bigger in here. So let's keep casting. Beauty, dude. Nice. First one of these of the trip, everyone. Love to see him. One of my favorite fish in the world. There he is. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Probably 18 incher. Pink jig never fails there. So as all skillhead fishing goes and all trips go, day number seven is met with some adversity. Our buddy that we were supposed to go with this day had a sick child. He couldn't make it to the river this day. Gary, if you're watching, thank you so much for trying to set us up anyways. But we had to make a game time decision and change our plans right away in the morning and get ready to make day number seven happen. Locked and loaded for day seven. And guess what, it's snowing again. <laughs> this has been the craziest weather of any trip I've ever been on. But an epic one to boot, no matter what way you've looked at it. We've had success almost every day. We've worked our butts off. And we've come to a new place and caught fish almost seven days in a row. I'm very proud of it so far. Day seven is underway, hopefully in a big way. We're floating a really gnarly stretch of river. We've got some giant rapids along the stretch I've heard. You have to get out and fish from the bank in this section. It's another one of those areas, so. That's what we'll be doing all day. And hopefully, we either find a bunch or a giant. That's the goal today, a bunch or a giant. But the real goal is just one. We gotta complete this challenge with one fish, no matter what. But it's a beautiful day. The snow's coming down. Let's go fishing. So it's all coming together. It's is day number seven. We've only missed one day without a fish on this entire trip. And I would love, love, love to go out with a bang. I haven't put a really big fish in the net yet. Marlon got a big one, James got a big one. And I myself need to find that monster. I need to find that fish that I've been searching for seven days for. And all I can think about is, can we do this? Can we make it happen? And can we pull this whole thing together on day number seven? Danger, danger. Hold on, Tiny. Danger ahead. Wow, what a tombstone. Look at that thing behind me. It's a tombstone with somebody's name on it, not eyes. <laughs> wow, there's another one. Crazy, crazy. Oh, this is a beautiful hole though, right below this giant rapid. I can't wait to stick my worm in it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first cast of day seven. Cross our fingers. Fingers are crossed. Fingers are crossed. Worm is deployed. Things are happening. Fingers crossed. 
Cross them with me, everybody. If you're in your living room, cross your fingers. You know, for some reason, I really thought that was going to happen. First cast of day seven was going to be a fish, but I guess I was getting a little too overzealous. Too big for my boots, if you will. <sighs> okay, I'm going to go a little deeper. Cast number two is the cast. It's fish. Oh my God. Whoa. That thing smoked it. I felt it actually hit through all the way through the line and take off with it. Come on, hit it again. I shallowed up a tiny bit on that next cast, make him come get it. Well, hole number one did not prevail, but we gotta keep moving. One thing we've learned a lot on this trip so far is that we're spending too much time at holes. And we're not moving quickly enough down river, especially in a place that we don't know like this. So we gotta get in the boat, keep going, and keep stopping, and keep getting out and casting. And that's how you catch fish. Well, it looks like we got a pretty serious rapid here, guys. The river makes a bend, turns, and disappears. And it's very, very loud. So we're gonna take the rods around, we're gonna take the backpacks around, scout this rapid out, make sure I see a safe line through it. And then we're gonna have ourselves a little fun. Let's go around and check it out. All right, here it is. Pretty big. Definitely about a class four rating. I don't know how well you guys can hear me with all this loud water, but I'm gonna go up here and check out my line. I think I got it picked out pretty good. Really, I just don't wanna get stuck on this thing right here. Everything else is pretty safe, so I think I'll come in, point my nose to the left, try to shoot down that fast water and out. Or if I can get my nose turned and push this way, I might be able to lurch my way through this area over here and not get too stuck. I don't know, I'm gonna evaluate it here. I'm gonna come in from the top, turn my nose this way, back paddle twice, come right in here, and on down and through. That'll save me from going into the, the meat eater right here. I wanna be over here, away from the meat. Meat, me, meat, me. Definitely gonna life jacket up for this one. And these are big, these are class five life jackets, which means they float really good. So this is what I'm gonna put on. I'm not gonna wear just a normal kind of chintzy inflatable one. I'm putting a good one on just in case something bad happens. And have a rescue plan. I already talked to Sean about it. If something bad happens, he's gonna go to a certain place. We're gonna do a certain thing. Put my life jacket on. like it should be. Scout your rapids, scout them twice, scout them three times. Make sure to stick to your lines and stick to your gut. That's the big thing when running big rapids like that, especially ones you don't know well, is stick to your line and make that idea and have a second backup plan, but stick to plan A and went well. A little jittery. Now it's time to catch a fish.
Ah! Ah! Day number seven is not easy. Well, neither were any of the other days, so I'm not surprised, but this is gonna be a grind. But God, it's gonna feel good when it happens, though. It's gonna be a relief. To go only one day of this entire seven day without a fish, and a day that we had a lot of adversity. We had to drive all over the place, got stuck in the snow, but today is tough. The conditions are absolutely beautiful, though. I mean, I wouldn't, about eight, probably seven, eight foot of is. It's not crystal clear, but it's definitely not too dirty to fish, and it's just, Everything is perfect right now. The situation is perfect. I just have to find some fish. I'm starting to feel like this is a repeat of day three. I'm all by myself fishing a big river, having to get out and fish from the bank and having a hard time locating these fish. I'm starting to worry. I'm really starting to worry that I'm not in the right place. I'm not there at the right time and that I'm not going to find any of these fish. Let's go. Let's go. Nice hops. Nice hops. And with the most sexy bobber down ever known to man. The way that bobber went down and what went through my mind when it went down was this is happening. That's a fish, that's not bottom, and this is actually happening. Day number seven, fish number seven, we did it. Oh, it's a good one too. It's a good one too. On the nightmare. Heck yeah, it's a really nice one. I literally have goosebumps right now. That bobber went down so sexily. Wow, that was awesome. And this is the big fish. Oh God, he's strong. So strong. Oh, oh man. I was starting to sweat. It worked him out of there. River number seven. Yeah. Oh God, that's such a cool looking fish, you guys. He is studly. Big old red stripe. Definitely the prettiest fish of the trip. He is just gorgeous. This is what we came for, baby. This is it. This is why we came. <laughs> Look at this fish. <laughs> this is incredible and it's a hatchery fish of all things. Wow. Look at this thing. What an incredible beast. Switch to the nightmare. Oh, I can't believe I did it, but I did it. I have not seen such a pretty fish in a long time. Probably 38, 39 inches long and a hatchery of all things. What a way to get on the board on day seven. Look at this beautiful beast. What a blessing. Thank the creator for that one. All right, lovely. See you later, bud. Well, that's a thing of beauty right there. Thanks for being here, everybody. We did it. Yeah, you just grab it. Oh, oh my God. Fish. Fish. So the nerves are still shaking off. I call my best friend in the world, Phil, and I'm telling him the whole story, kind of talking to him about how incredible this trip has been, and then magic strikes again. Killer, dude. I think. Oh yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. Buddy bite. Buddy bite. My buddy couldn't be here. Oh God, he's huge, dude. Oh my God. Buddy bite. Phil, buddy bite. Phil, buddy, bite. Duder, you're right on the mic, dude. Give a little shout out to the homies. Yeah, yeah, dude. In the holy waters. Dude, I don't even know what's going on on the end of my line right now. I haven't seen it yet. Sick. Dude, it's big. It's like really big. 
bobber down skis. Big red buck, big red buck. Just relax. Just take a deep breath, he says. Oh man, just released like a 15 pounder and I might have just hooked one bigger. It's way bigger. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Phone a friend. Hey, phone a friend. Wow, that's a nice fish. Wow, dude. It's the coolest part about this trip so far, everybody. The first day we caught them on beads. Second day we caught them on worms. Next day we caught them on spinners. Today we're getting them on jigs. It's just been an absolute all around, all around workout of every single technique that we know how to do to get to be successful on a new river every time. Nothing has worked the same every day. Oh my God, this thing is heavy. Wow, dude. What is this? What is this thing? Oh. It's like a nine pounder. No, it's a big, big. Close to, I don't know, 18 or so. Big, 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 big. Oh. Little, that's enough. All right, dude, let me call you back. Things are getting serious. All right, thank you. Woo! Good old fashioned buddy bite. <laughs> Just talking to my best friend, Phil. Hooked the biggest fish of the trip. Oh, this thing is huge. I need to go up here. Oh God, this thing is nice. Big colored up buck. Okay, yeah, ready? Oh, wow. Wow, everybody. <laughs> what a way <laughs> to top off the day than with this guy. <laughs> wow. Biggest fish of the trip by far. Just a war battled old dude. Just grandpa fish. Oh my God, look at him. I gotta put him back in the net for a second. That is the beauty of these cradle nets that we make at Addicted is look how calm that fish is. He's in the current, he's breathing. But just look at him. Just an absolute monster. Wow. Look at the hook in his jaw. Everything, everything about him is unique and cool and beautiful. Okay, so I've transferred him over to the other net to get a real measure on him. See what we're working with here. Okay, we got his nose on the front tape. Nose on the on their orange. 38 inches to the tip. Oh, what a beast. Wow. What? What a beast. This is what we traveled all this way, put in all this work to get is a creature like this. A straight up marvel of mother nature. Just a war beast, man. He's been fighting his whole life. Probably four or five years old. Incredible fish. Hands down, one of the most beautiful and epic fish of the entire trip. The colors on this buck and, and the way he fought, the way he took that jig down, and just as it, the whole setting as it came together, being in that moment with that fish in that place was a moment I'll never forget. And I think it's a moment that we all strive for and fish for and why we put the effort into doing trips like this. To accomplish a goal, to have fun, and to find success in, in so many different realms on a trip like this brings it all together. Day number seven, hands down, my very favorite day of the trip. Oh, well, in efforts to get, let's see, this photo right here, we lost the fish. We didn't get the release on camera, but that's okay. Here we go, nope, not on there either. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to end day seven. Day seven's not over, but what a way to end the seventh day of this trip. Two of the biggest fish of the trip, two gnarly bucks, what everybody loves, what everybody dreams about catching. We got two of them in one day. And we still got a lot of water to float. We're only like halfway down with this float today, so who knows what's gonna happen. Can we break 20?
it's not a big rover. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that was everything. Everything a guy wanted. I was just sitting there like, come on. Come on. I know there's got to be a fish in there. Such an elegant bite and bobber down. Now I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. Really nice chrome fish. Oh, what do we do here? This could get messy. Okay, and Indiana Jones. Got my steel head on. Okay, this could work. Get about here. Come on up, honey. Wow, what a beautiful fish. Oh, wow, what a strong fish. Oh. Okay, I'm dying. I'm dying. We leveled out. We leveled out. We're good. We're good, everyone. We did it. We're alive. Come on over, sweetie. Oh, what a nice fish. Oh, gorgeous. Another happy fish. Oh, wow. Look at her. What a fish. Oh, wow. What a beautiful, beautiful hen. And she's already done her thing and gone. Ooh, leeches. All over me. Oh. See you later, honey. She's got a job to do still. Look at these. These things are all over her body. Real leeches. Ew. Ooh, looking for blood to suck. Not mine. All right. Fish number three, day number seven. Ow! As if it couldn't get any better, we're leaving on cloud nine with a third fish. I am totally tickled pink and couldn't be happier. Day number seven's a wrap. Let's head to the takeout, everybody. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan of the jungle. Watch out for that raft. So completing this trilogy of the seven day series is, is something that one, I never thought was really gonna happen. And I have to thank you guys, the viewers, and you amazing, amazing Addicted community for being here through it all and encouraging us and getting these videos, the views that, that we needed to encourage us to go make more of these videos like this. An idea that we have coming up for the future and we wanna see your guys' opinions is, is elongating these trips, making them a 10 day, 14 day, 21 day trips out into the wilderness chasing these fish or any sort of species of fish. So we can't do this without your guys' feedback. Thank you so much, Addictive Family, for supporting us and making these dreams happen. With all that being said, be inspired by this video, everybody, to go out and challenge yourself. Enjoy Mother Nature, find that happiness, and experience the things that you want to out of life. This is an experience I will never forget, everybody. And again, thank you all so much for being along for the ride. And until we meet again, you all stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.